The welcome to Knock and Raleigh Resource Centre, Organic Gardens and Organic Allotments. My name is Tim and today we're going to talk a bit about biodiversity. It's a huge word when it's broken down it's not so big or so scary. The first one we have here is our insect hotel. The more insects you have in the garden the better and bio biodiversity simply means bring something new into your garden. It be, in this case we have the insect hotel and in a couple of minutes we'll be going over and talk a little bit about the pond. Both of them together in your garden is biodiversity. Right, uh, we are now at the second uh, our pond. The first one we showed you was the, the, the insect hotel. The next thing I just want to talk a little bit about and name a few of the insects are the, um, is our, our water pond. Because um, to, get, to put a pond in the garden is absolutely fantastic. That is a massive biodiversity thing to actually practice. Because you've got the caddis flies, you've got the, 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 the water uh, boatmen and all these different little, little, little insects. And you, you have um, the larva of, of the dragonfly. There's a whole heap of stuff inside in that pond when you get your pond up and working and then you just try to get someone in to scoop it and identify the actual insects. Um, and it's not rocket science to build a pond. There is no pump, nothing required. You, the, the, plants, the, the plants that's in the pond provide the oxygen. They actually make the oxygen. We're just going to make a, an ornamental bridge. You will be able to walk on top of it and cross it on over. And you'll be able to view from above down, looking at the tops of the reeds and looking at whatever insects are in the pond. Plus, you're going to try and bring fish into the pond. Again, the, by putting the fish in the pond, we'll, we'll attract in the, the, the crane. And um, the crane, again, that's more biodiversity by, by, uh, by bringing in other birds into the garden. So hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll um, price up this woodwork stuff and uh, we'll make it in a kind of a Japanese style. And again, anyone that wants to get involved in a, gar in a, in a pond at home, you can come down to us here on Knock and Raleigh and we'll talk to you about it. Uh, today now we're going to talk uh, a little bit about trees. There's so many trees out there. We'll, 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 stick, we'll stick with the trees that we actually have in the garden ourselves. In the countryside, our farmers, us all, really used to call these plants the shkiok. Now the shkiok is, um, is a pretty... It, it's, so quick, it's a very short word for such, a, such beautiful plants because the, 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 the shkiok simply means bush. But uh, these are more interested in just the bush. You have the white thorn and you have the black thorn. The white thorn also known as the fairy tree. We can actually eat the leaves, the flowers and also the fruit, which is the haw. Um, the black thorn can use the, the slow, which is the fruit, to um, give, a, give a, a, what we say, a different taste to our gin. That's where slow gin comes from. When you puncture the, 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 fru the fruit and uh, it's left into gin. Now, as I said, the, the white thorn is always known as the fairy tree, but the black thorn has a, a little bit worse name because it it's, was the tree that was actually used to actually make the pishogs, which is a huge program, a huge story altogether. Um, here then we have, beside it is the the mountain ash, a very good tree. A lot of people planted these trees in their farms. They put them north, south, east and west because with the red berry on it, it's, it's supposed to neutralize any curse that, that is put on your land by the use of the shogs. Um, we're here looking at, at um, the sedum. It's a, a, a brilliant plant for, um, for biodiversity because it brings in all our, our um, pollinators, our bees, our butterflies, our moths our, our uh, hoverflies, it, it rise in the whole lot. The same for this one here, borage. Another plant. Bees absolutely love it and, and they'll be very busy on that some days. And again, the ordinary honeybee and uh, even uh, the butterflies, they absolutely love it. And all this bringing in new plants, bringing in water, bringing in insect hotels, that's all what biodiversity means. And of course, it's a big word and people get, might even get scared of it. But biodiversity simply means to plant something different in your garden, bring in, introduce the water into your garden. You are, you are practicing bio, biodiversity when you do that. The same with insect hotel. 
It's all about, about making your garden more busier, all for food. B birds' food, the insects' food, pollinating. It's just, uh, it's a wonderful world actually. And um, it's not hard at all at all to practice it. And again, any time if any of our groups want to come down to Nakanoli Resource Centre, we will give you any information that you need.